you told me before when we were talking about sentient beings and I asked about a tree that I would do well to try to get to know one really well, uh, preferably an old oh, one. So there's an old tree out in my yard, or at least mm -hmm. the oldest, I think, around in my yard. Pretty big guy. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been spending some... I'll Go good, good, good. Keep going. I've been spending some time with the tree uh, every morning, but I'm curious mm -hmm. what you mean when you say get to know a tree very well. Well, uh, first of all, uh, you know, you can say hello for me, right? But then I want to know how the tree's doing. So the first thing you got to do is like sense how the tree is. Is the tree uh, happy and thriving? Is it joyous? Is it, you know, or is it like, a bit beaten down is it is it suffering with the weather or something else you know the, the heat wave that we've been having or whatever uh so how, how is the tree and so when you start inquiring about its existence in those manners then you'll you'll be amazed just keep going that's all it's like yeah, how do you get to know a, a person that doesn't speak in, in your language it doesn't speak at all well that's going to take some time it's going to take the capacity to sense in, in ways that you haven't sensed before and to think in ways that you haven't think. So just another example. Let me give you an example from, from recent science about why the Avatamsaka Sutra is so useful for the, for the, for the for scientists and the mind and philosophers. Good God. So, so plants clearly communicate with each other. And we've learned now that thought or, or that, that neural activity or what we call neural activity is not restricted to brain cells, that all cells communicate with each other, the, especially the ones that are adjacent. Now, we as, as mammals and, 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 and more evolved creatures, lizards and things, I think they've got yeah, nerves that, that carry signals more quickly and makes them more able to respond to, to other animals, I suppose. Now, and if you look at some birds and some fish, you're trying to catch them with your bare hands, you'll know they're fast. So, but here we look at a plant, and it seems really, really slow. I mean, it is slow, but some of them, like a tree in your front of your house, it could be have been alive like two hundred years easily, depending on what kind of tree it is. Or maybe it's a hundred years, but they live a long time. Some of them, and and they communicate with us, which means they do emit signals, including signals, by the way, of of hazard. I I, don't, I haven't. Uh, looked into this one deeply enough, but someone's saying they communicate uh, dangers in the in their in their sphere in the forest, for example, of some parasite or some fungus or something like that. Uh, again, that one I need to look more into, so I won't elaborate on that. But the point is, is that that even from a rational point of view. I mean, even from the most rational materialistic point of view, you have to acknowledge that the thing uh, is alive, okay, that it, that it has seasons, and that as you get to know it, you'll see that it has kind of like moods. And if you get to know it even further, you'll uh, consider the fact that it's, it's not just one tree, it's connected to other trees. And trees don't occur as individual uh, entities unless we force them to. And so it's better to probably talk about a, a family of trees or a grove of trees or, or a small grouping of trees. At any rate, they communicate below and above ground. And so then the humans left with the same situation that we are with, say, uh, dolphins. We can't understand what they're saying to each other very well. But now AI, especially uh, you know, uh, with good data, will tell us what the animals are saying to each other, which is going to be extraordinary. But meanwhile, if you attune your, your, your consciousness to the consciousness of another creature and you do it enough and you understand that, wait a minute, you've been kind of arrogant your whole life thinking, well, my consciousness is the best consciousness. My consciousness is even the only consciousness, you know, maybe monkey have a little, maybe often have a little whatever but that's incredibly arrogant and I'm, actually i'm just describing myself <laughs> so forgive me but 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 people looked at it about plants and they say well you know you're not worth much we can cut you down in a heartbeat 
and and you can't run and you can't talk and so you you must be dumb and and stupid well uh, maybe so in some regards but in other regards you know it takes something to live a thousand years and you see a lot of stuff in that time and so i guess although i can't on on the grounds of of purely of what we understand now scientifically i can't say oh yeah plants have their own consciousness and you can attune to it and you should because you know we have the data from the eegs and we have videotapes of them you know catching flies and we have videotapes of them wrapping around each other uh to provide nutrients you know the roots and so on and so forth so i don't have any of that stuff yet we'll probably get it but not in my lifetime and so in the meanwhile it's just an exercise in open in openness of consciousness and free from your your preformed assumptions and those are the hardest ones to root out you know like like i didn't believe that lizards cared for their young how could they 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 laid eggs but i go down the amazon and sure enough the moms you are you take their babies and and hurt their babies and they're they come yelling and and make very quickly to shore to get rid of you and save their little baby so so live and learn i guess is the way to look at it and 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 i'm just describing in my experience you know i used to walk a lot in minimum park we had beautiful trees there and, and as we do here but but i was able to uh you get to know the trees over time and i don't mean uh six weeks i mean more like six months you know years or years and then you'll see what i mean and you'll see what krishna murdy means when he says have you ever seen the tree you know how he says that yeah. <laughs> you've yeah. never seen the tree <laughs> and there's somebody else a zen master uh i'd like to get which one and a great artist i think he was uh Chinese or Korean or something. At any rate, he he sat and just looked at a tree, and he looked at the tree for about a year and a half, two years, and then he he took out his calligraphy brush <laughs> and drew it. You know, drew it in like uh, three minutes max, and then uh, let it dry and rolled it up and took it home. I mean, it's a masterpiece portrait of a tree, but he knew the tree, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's that kind of. Uh, connection that kind of intimacy that is characteristic of, of a mind that's that's starting to open and, and because you'll be overwhelmed with all the all your brothers and sisters out there right and they're, they're everybody's going along and they're they're usually doing quite well if, if mankind hasn't or you know nature hasn't messed with them so that's kind of the spirit of that uh now there are also the whole, you know, tradition of, of the uh, the hechiceros, the maguas, the curanderos, the uh, you know those those type, and and they and and then you have the traditional uh, Japanese, and and they imbue spirits to all these things. So maybe it's not that huge a stretch, but try it and see what you think. My opinion is worth nothing. It literally is. I I'd rather you. You, you not hear my opinion then take it on by what i say but so what i recommend then is that you just explore these things for yourself and make up your own mind as with everything right right that's the only way to go here that's the only it's a really interesting enterprise